Your textbook identifies two different kinds of requests, two different ways to ask people to do things for you or to give things to you or to otherwise accomplish a task that you give them. First of these is the direct request, and that means just asking people what you want. Simply, easily, as straightforwardly as possible, uh, asking people to do what you want them to do or not do, perhaps, what you don't want them to do. The second way is called problem-solving communication. And this is a somewhat more finesseful and backdoor approach to making requests to people. And it takes a lot longer and is a lot more complicated, but sometimes it really is the right way to do it. The difference between the two, uh, or the, the different kinds of situations that require the two, depend a lot on how inclined people already are to do what you want them to do. Before we talk about each one individually, I'd like you to watch this brief clip featuring two different kinds of communications, two different kinds of requests, one from each of the categories that we're talking about in, in this podcast. Dear staff members, it has come to my attention that some of you have been watching reruns of Jersey Shore on your office computers. Let me remind you that this is not an appropriate use of company property. Please refrain from using your computers to watch streaming videos that are unrelated to your jobs. Regards, Metsy Manager. Dear team, as you know, our sales have been down sharply this year, and, as a result, the company's revenues have become dangerously low. This is not anybody's fault. It reflects the competitive market that we are now in. However, it is a problem that we must solve if we are going to stay in business. Normally, companies in our situation would begin laying off employees. But I think that this is the wrong answer for our division. Fewer people will mean even fewer sales, less revenue, and more financial problems in the future. Rather than lay people off, I have decided to ask each of you to come in one Saturday a month without pay to conduct additional sales calls. I know that it will be difficult to sacrifice a weekend, but this is the only way that I can think of to increase sales without increasing expenses. I do not want to lay anybody off, nor do I believe that we will be able to balance our budget by decreasing expenditures alone. We must increase revenues, which means that we must increase sales. I will therefore request that each of you select one Saturday per month to come in to work. Please schedule your extra Saturday at least three weeks in advance so that we can plan to have contact information available. Thank you very much for all you do. Regards, Metsy Manager. Okay, if you look at the first of these requests that uh, Mitzi Manager makes, she's asking people to do something relatively simple, to stop watching streaming video reruns of silly TV shows on their work computer. Now, this is something that most people know they probably shouldn't be doing anyway. Uh, they may be a little embarrassed that they were caught, but she's not naming any names. She's not punishing anybody. She's just asking people to stop doing something they shouldn't be doing anyway. This isn't a big deal request. People expect this kind of request, and nobody's going to put up a big fight and insist on their right to watch Jersey Shore reruns on their computers at work. The direct request, the, the simple and straightforward request, is something you want to use when you know that the audience isn't going to give you a lot of resistance because it's a request that they expect and that they're going to consider reasonable. Sometimes you use this when you only need a response from people who are willing to do what you want them to do. If you're looking for volunteers to give blood, you just ask for volunteers to give blood. And if somebody doesn't want to do it, that doesn't matter because you're only interested in the response of those who will do it. Sometimes, if the audience is very busy and won't read all of their messages, you just ask very quickly instead of a long wind-up that people aren't going to see anyway. And in some cases, you'll find that your organization's culture always prefers simple and direct communication. Different organizations have different cultures, different characteristics, and if you're in a situation where direct messages are highly valued, then you should always consider using that kind of message. What about Mitzi's second request? This is a very different situation. Most people do not expect to be asked to work weekends, and when they do, they expect to be paid for it. 
So she's asking for something difficult, something that everyone needs to buy into, something that's going to produce a lot of, lot of uh, objections, a lot of resistance, and they're going to be reading her message very carefully. So this is a situation where it really is worth Mitzi's time and will be worth your time in situations like this to do a lot more to explain the request, to try to create what we now call buy-in for the request or people who go along with your reasoning and who share the goals and the visions that you have. But this kind of request takes a lot more work. And uh, let's look at a couple of the things that you should consider when you're making these kinds of difficult requests. Mitzi followed a very specific pattern when she crafted her problem-solving message to her sales team about the need to come in on Saturdays. First, she described the problem, and she gave details about the problem, and not just surface details either, but uh, she gave the sort of information that managers have so that her people could see that she was including them uh, in all of the information that she had. She explained the solution to the problem and why it was a solution, and then she immediately anticipated the objections by talking about the potential negatives to the problem and showing how the advantages everybody keeping their job, the company staying open, not having to have layoffs, outweighed those disadvantages, even though they were serious disadvantages. Um, if there are additional benefits to what you're proposing, you want to include those too, because you never know exactly what is going to trip somebody's interest. And then finally, you make a very specific request. This is what I need you to do. And that's a, that's a rule of thumb, and you won't probably use all of them in every message, but that's the basic problem-solving communication template for difficult communications that you may have to make someday. Most organizations suffer from some version of the us-versus-them dichotomy. Labor versus management, faculty versus administration, uh, suits versus guys in the shop, blue collar versus white collar. There are some people in every organization that resent the people who usually make more money, seem to have easier jobs, and get to make all of the decisions. And if you're one of those people who makes all of the decisions, you are going to be, from time to time, in a position where you have to ask people to do difficult things. You can't do this as long as those dichotomies persist. You can only do this if you can build common ground. And this requires persuasion. This requires you to present yourself as somebody who identifies with and is part of the group that you're asking to make the sacrifice. One thing to make sure you do is you make sure you make the sacrifice too. If, if there are sacrifices to be made, if Mitzi is going to have everybody on her sales force come in, she had darn well better be coming in on Saturdays herself. Otherwise, it's going to be virtually impossible to convince people that she is making that decision as part of a team. But if you'll remember what I said earlier, people are both inherently selfish and inherently altruistic. And you can appeal to both of these impulses by finding the right common ground. You can appeal to shared visions and dreams and hopes and goals and aspirations. At the same time, you can say, in effect, we're all in the same lifeboat, and it's going to sink or it's going to float, and we'll all be in this together. But to do this, you've got to identify with the audience that you're communicating to, to the extent where, where they perceive you correctly as somebody who shares both their situation and their aspirations.